Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Colts cast. We're here to talk about anything and everything Indianapolis Colts. I am your host, Jamal Lawrence, here to break down this Colts versus Steelers game for us, this pregame show. Now, unfortunately, Eric is not with us here today, but he will be back on Saturday to give a postgame show. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. You guys know why you are here. You clicked on this story on this pod because he told you here in the title that this is all about will the Colts offense or defense be the key to beating the Steelers here this Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Before we get into it, guys, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video if you have not already. That's a really good thing to help us get pushed out to other Colts fans like yourself. Help us keep us in this algorithm as we try to build to this 2,000 subscribers. So please help us out. Give us like and subscribe and keep enjoying this content that we got coming for you. So let's get into it without further ado. Now, this is a huge, huge game for the Indianapolis Colts but also a huge game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Both teams are coming in here still trying to make sure they can secure their spot in the AFC playoff picture. So it's a big, big, big win for both teams. Huge loss for both teams. So what do the Colts need to do? What do the Colts need to do on the offensive side of the ball or defensive side of the ball to beat the Steelers? Now, if Eric were here, you know, he may tell you one thing or another, but you guys know how I roll. I'm all about the offensive side of the ball. So I'm going to break this down for us from the offensive side to say why it's more important for the offense to be stout against this Pittsburgh Steeler team. So right now, you know, of course, the Steelers are averaging just 16 points a game, 16.2 points a game. to be correct. That means we got to put up 16 points, more than 16 points to win the game. Now, of course, that's a perfect picture with the defense not allowing any points out there. But I say that because the Indianapolis Colts right now are averaging 24 points a game. When you do the math, you say, all right, we can do that as eight points higher. We should be able to work something out. But there have been some issues with the Colts lately, as we all know, guys. Uh, currently right now, you know, thinking about offensive stats, we're 30, we're at 35.8% on third down completion. That's 24th in the league. That's the bottom half, obviously. And then... 21st in giveaways. We have 20 giveaways this season. Actually, uh, they happen more often than not where the interception comes or the fumble comes. There have been a few weeks where he's been able to ride it out without getting it, and those have been great weeks for us. We've seen it across the board. But for what it's worth, I, you can expect that. And here's why it scares me. Because the, the Pittsburgh Steelers have 21 takeaways this year. 21 takeaways. They, they are a takeover machine. And that scares me because when you have a takeover machine going against a handout like Minshew when it comes to some of these issues, they're going to bring the heat. They're going to bring the heat heavy because they know if they can get him rattled, it can cause for some issues. Now, like I mentioned earlier, though, we're sitting at 24 points a game, which is ranked eight, which is great for our offense. I mean, great. We, we dropped down, obviously, from where I think we were uh, averaging 28 or so earlier during the season, but we've progressively just gotten a little bit, hello, going down a little bit as the season's going on. But one of the biggest reasons why is because the offense just hasn't been productive in the past couple of weeks. And we can sit here and go down every single game and give a full breakdown, but I want to give you guys just a quick little breakdown of the last couple of games. You know, why it's important that we can't leave any points on the field going into Saturday. Last week against the Bengals, offense put up eight points. We scored 14 total points. Offense only put up eight of those. So the defense had to put up some points on the board. Game before that against the Titans, we only scored 12 total points on offense. Final score, we dropped 31 total points. Do the math. The offense put up 12 out of that 31. Look at the Bucks game. We dropped 18 total points as the offense, but we scored a total of 27 points. Against the Panthers, offense put up just six total points. But on the scoreboard, we read that we scored 27 total points. And, of course, we don't have to talk about the Patriots game, that 10-6 to 6 game. We did put up six of those 10 points, which is great to see. But I, I bring those numbers to you because that shows just how important it is for offense to be firing, guys. Our defense and our special team has been stout, stout force when it comes to generating turnovers and scoring off those turnovers. So we can't afford to go into this game hoping that our defense or our special teams can make these big plays. When we get the ball and we get it, no matter where the field position is, we have to move downfield, get into the red zone where the Steelers lack at like a 40-something, 48%, I believe it is, and we got to score. 
We got to score. And if we can't get a touchdown, we have to get those field goals. We have to, have to, have to, because we cannot continue to put up these eggs on the board and expect our defense or our special teams to bail us out for us. Now, I think personally, these are my keys to success for us to be able to be productive on the offensive side of the ball. We got to get Zach Moss going early. I mean, <laughs> I feel like we say this week after week. The running backs have to be productive early. Each couple of games, you know, we see we come out trying to bomb the ball downfield. We saw it last week against the Bengals. Didn't work out too well. Of course, we saw it against the Titans the week before that. It did work out well for us. Alex Pearson, that huge bomb at the start of the game. But I would like to see just some old school ground and pound. Zach Moss, from what we saw at the beginning of the season with him. And, of course, I know, you know, we can sit here and talk about how, well, at that time, Richardson was here, whatever the case is. Well, Minshew was here for a lot of that, too, because, of course, Richardson got injured throughout those games. But we look back at Zach Moss at the beginning of the season. I mean, game one for him against the uh, Texans, 18 carries for 88 yards. Against Baltimore, 30 carries for 122 yards. Against the Rams, 18 carries for 70 yards. Against Tennessee, 23 carries for 165 yards. And, of course, then we start to see that dwindle down because JT got off IR, got his contract, and everything was back good for him. But then, of course, we see our last two weeks where JT has been out against the Titans, uh, 19 carries for 51 yards. And then, of course, against the Bengals, 13 carries, 28 yards. Now, those games, we were playing from behind. We were definitely playing from behind. And I know that whenever we're playing from behind, we just start gunning that ball out. But I want to see Zach Moss from play one in there being efficient. I want to see this play action be utilized after they stack the box with Zach in there because they see he's a threat. Then play action that thing out. You can hit up Mo Ali Cox or, or any of these other guys out there, the Josh Downs, you know, the, the Alec Pierce. MPJ, Will Mallory. I mean, anybody can get open once you start to stack this box for. So I really would like to see them utilize that play action. And honestly, guys, you know, I, I know that Pittman's that high volume guy for us, but I don't want to see, I really don't want to see Minshew forcing the ball to him to ensure those targets because I feel like sometimes rather than not, we're trying to make sure that Pittman's getting these 15 targets a game. Hey, look for those check downs. We have downs open. We have Pierce open. Minshew's a backup quarterback. I know that. But and to be in the NFL, you still have to be able to go through your progressions. Let's be clear about that. To make it as an NFL quarterback, you have to be able to go through those progressions. So I would like to see Minshew focus a little bit more on those checkdowns, limit those mental mistakes, trust your offensive line, relax, happy feet. Just relax for us. This is a huge game, and he can win this. I'm telling you right now, Minshew can help win this game. He just has to be composed. He has to keep his composure out there. Now, I can't sit here and say that this is all going to be on the offense, of course. You know, now I, I I I will say based off the title, will the Colts offense or defense be the key? I'm telling you that the offense will be the key. But of course, this is not all up to them. The defense has to be consistent for us as well. I know I talked about the defense giving us points, special teams giving us points, creating a few turnovers here and there. But let's go ahead and address the fact that the Colts are allowing 25 points a game. Steelers only allowing 19 points a game. We're negative. We're minus one right there. Colts have to make sure on the defensive side of the ball that they are holding it down, getting to Mitch Trubisky, stopping, um, stopping Gary Wilson or not, who, not Gary Wilson, um, Pickens. I don't even know how I said that, but Pickens, stopping Pickens, making sure that Najee isn't having a crazy big game. It's important for us to force Mitch to make bad plays. And one thing that we didn't do last week that we have to do this week and we've done previous week on the defense side of the ball, you have to get sacks. You have to get sacks. It's just it's just that simple. We saw when the pressure wasn't put on, the Bengals gave them plenty of time to figure out what they wanted to do. Trubisky has to get pressured the entire time so we can create turnovers or at least pin that offense back in their own, on their backfield. It has to happen. I think besides that, I mean, if we can't figure out those things, it may be a long game for the Indianapolis Colts. Now, do I think the Colts are going to win this game without a shadow of a doubt? I think that we, we got that loss out of the way. Unfortunately, the streak is over, but you get the loss out of the way. You know, those those jitters are gone. Now it's time to get back out there and get productive with the squad. I think the offense can do this. It's simple. It's simple. It's something that Minshew can do. Just a matter of him plugging in and play. We've seen Shane Steichen week over week draw up some schemes that have been consistently good 
continue to do that just this time add a little bit of more zach moss in there let him let the young man get in there and eat to help elevate this team to another level utilize those check downs utilize downs utilize peers I'm telling you, I mean, we've seen we've now seen this this play. We're bringing Ziggy on the uh, on the offense side of the ball to Mo Ali Cox twice. One time almost broke it off for a touchdown. Second time, of course, for a little two point conversion for us or excuse me, to get a first down. So we need to continue to see this stuff, guys. So let's let let's see it happen. Indianapolis Colts have no problem beating the Pittsburgh Steelers this Saturday. It's all going to be based off of how many self-inflicted wounds can we avoid? If we can stay calm in the pocket, if we can get the ball out and we can be stout on defense, the game can be a cakewalk for us. We're going against a defensive powerhouse right here. We got to be ready for it. Offensive line has to be ready for it. Shane Steichen has to be ready for it. Minshew has to be ready for it. But drop your comments below, guys. Let me know what you think. I think the Colts pull this one off. I think Colts going to drop. I think final score for this one is going to be 28 to 21, 28, 21 Colts defense is going to allow a few points, but I think the Colts figure out a way to muster this thing up. 28, 21 is the final score for us. Drop your comments below. Tell me what you think. Let me know what your final score predictions are. But again, as always, guys, this is the Colts cast. You can find us on Spotify, um, Apple, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you listen to your Colts podcast at that's you can find us again if you're still here like subscribe let us know what you think about the show appreciate everybody listening y'all take care have a great rest of the week let's get ready for this saturday game go colts baby